Rain, you are muted. Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Yeah, wait, wait. wait yeah. I'm just. Good morning, friend. Welcome to the third webinar of FPTA, Future of Paper and Paperboard, A Converter's Perspective. Today in the audience, we have a participation from across various fields and even some from overseas. In the audience, we have paper merchants, paper manufacturers, converters, publishers, students, students from Institute of Printing and Technology, Institute of Packaging, people from Pharma, FMCG pain. I mean, it's a very diversified audience today, what we have. In the previous two webinars, what we did, uh, we got to know from paper manufacturers about their opinion, projection, estimate about paper consumption post COVID into India. And also an insight about global paper industry. Today, we are lucky that we will be listening to the paper consumers, the people who actually buy paper and convert paper from across various verticals of paper and paperboard. They shall share their estimate of their own, in, of their particular industry and the impact of the same on paper consumption and paper industry in India. Today, we are very lucky to have a very esteemed panel who shall enlighten us, enlighten us with their knowledge and wisdom about their respective industry. Without wasting any more time, I request Deepak Mittalji from Bangalore to please introduce our first guest. Deepak, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Irene. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to all the our panelists. It's an honor and privilege to introduce a blockbuster set of uh, panelists for our webinar today. Between the six speakers, uh, we have close to three centuries of experience collectively in the print and converting industry. And they're all legends in their own right. So friends, brace yourself for a very interesting session. Let me introduce you uh, to you, our first uh, speaker today. Many of us may be tempted to think that our first speaker was born with a golden spoon, but let of, let, less of us remember how many of us have lost the golden spoon and how many of us have made gold to diamond and platinum. He is one such person who has converted the golden spoon to diamond and platinum, and he has evolved the path for the Money Park Institute that is unique in so many respects that one has to applaud his courage of conviction. Today, they have operations in India, Africa, etc. They serve a plethora of organizations, government, financial institutions, direct to consumer, packaging for brand owners, etc. They are the publishers of Udevani, a leading Kannada newspaper. I wish to introduce none other than Mr. Gautam Fai, Chairman of Manipal Technologies Limited. He is young, dynamic, and a go-getter. Manipal Technologies is probably one of the most versatile print companies in India, catering to a wide spectrum of segments in the print industry, starting from newspapers to commercial printing to digital packaging and technology solutions, etc. They are one of the earliest security presses in India. So much of the trust on the company that they were chosen as one, one of the two print companies in Asia to print the Harry Potter novel by J.K. Rowling. They have also printed over 50 crore Aadhaar cards for UIDI, and the list of their accomplishments has no stopping. For people who do not know, their family were the original promoters of, of Syndicate Bank before the government passed a resolution to nationalize all the banks many years back. Friends, it is an honor and privilege to introduce Mr. Gautam Pai. Gautam, over to you. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you for the kind words. And uh, my um, dear panel members, all the office bearers of uh, 
um, India Paper Trade Association and all the members. Uh, very nice to be with all of you today. Uh, thank you for inviting me to um, be part of the panel. You know, as uh, you're all aware, actually, the, we are in a very difficult situation and the uh, whole pandemic has really created a global health and uh, economic uh, crisis. I hope uh, in this difficult times, all of you, your families and loved ones uh, are healthy and safe. I think, um, you know, to protect uh, India from um, this health crisis, um, our government with good intention enforced a very strict uh, lockdown. It's probably one of the strictest uh, lockdowns in the world. I think we're one of the few countries where uh, manufacturing was also was shut down. And I think this is a, at least how I look at it, it's a crisis of a lifetime and uh, most businesses have been hit very, very hard. I think the pandemic has changed industries in many ways and uh, we don't know what the new normal will be from many, many aspects. I think for a business, it's, uh, if I compare it uh, to a person, it's like a person um, having a heart attack. So when a person has a heart attack, I think what happens, uh, whether he survives, recovers, how quickly he recovers, depends on many, many, many factors. It depends on how his current health is. It depends on how quickly he's taken to the ICU, what kind of treatment is given, what kind of doctors he has, um, of course, and then what kind of medical facilities are there, the hospital, and uh, all of that. So if you I, if I compare it to the business, I think it's very difficult to gauge what is going to really happen because we're still, as businesses, I think most business are still in the stage of going through the heart attack. It's not yet over. We have still to be taken to the ICU and we don't know what support we the industry is going to uh, get. We also don't know the hospital, that's our market environment, what kind of impact is going to happen to the market, our customers, then consumers, and that by the impact our own businesses. And it's very difficult to right now gauge the uh, destruction in demand, structural behavioral changes that are happening because we are still going through this uh, crisis. So I think, um, you know, in this situation, we have to make the best of um, what um, uh, we can. And I wanted to just share my screen right now. Sonal, can you help? Yeah, I think it should. Yeah. It's visible? Yeah. So, like I said, um, in this current situation, um, we have to make uh, the best um, of what we can. We should not use this crisis, go away. But before I share my views, I wanted to uh, share some data points um, from the various sources and seminars that we have been going through the last uh, many weeks in this lockdown. And all the sources are mentioned in the slide. I picked out some relevant which will be um, connected or relevant to our own industry. So one, if you look at it, there's a projection, varied projection of uh, what is the impact are going to be. Everyone says there's going to be a global recession. But estimates for India specifically are coming from, uh, you know, for the whole year that we will grow as a GDP about one and a half percent. But I have been in meetings with global consultants who are predicting even a minus 9% of GDP, right? So I think honestly, it's anyone's guess, it depends on um, what kind of um, stimulus is there, depends what will open when, depends on if there'll be further lockdowns. It's a, it's a big unknown right now, but that's the range we've been hearing, minus nine to one and a half percent. And we should also remember that these are macro figures. Industry level, it might be completely different. While you may have sector like agriculture still growing, there may be some sectors which are hit much, much worse. So, and also if you look at uh, the industry-wise impact, we have industries which have been hurt much worse, like for example, airlines, and also the recovery period, the current impact and the recovery time. So you have airlines, um, hospitality, etc., hit much harder. 
projected also a slower um, recovery. While we have things like uh, telecom hardly impacted, pharma less impacted. So it depends, I think, for each industry. And then we have to look at um, our customers' concentration in various segments and um, how it's going to work out. It's not only their recovery, which is, I think, a factor, but also in terms of how they're going to change their businesses. And I'll share a few examples on that, which is going to be the impact. So economic recovery is one change in behavior of our own customers, I think, is a key uh, element to it. So if you look at, for example, on, I picked out one or two slides, one on education. Um, you know, it's supposed to be one of the sectors expected to recover quickly. But there's a uh, opinion that if in the private schools, um, if the fees collection are slow, that could kind of affect payments. And if it affects payments to the publishers, then it goes to the whole chain. There's also a tremendous amount of um, digital consumption happening. So while there may not be any immediate impact on um, education from a print perspective, I think the trend is very clear that it's going to be uh, a combination of more and more digital along with uh, print. Uh, if you look at one of the sectors we serve, that's uh, banking, we do quite a bit of print um, for the banking and the financial services industry. The kind of adoption to digital has been high, but over the last six weeks, it's accelerated, right? Because they're forced to actually adopt more and more digital technologies. So definitely, there's going to be um, an effect of um, this whole pandemic and then ultimately the consumption um, of paper and related products in uh, this sector. Now, if we look at um, the recovery, I guess these are the different models that I've seen. This one is from McKinsey of how possibly um, the recovery path could be and it's a combination on what happens with the control of the spread um, of uh, COVID as well as the effectiveness of the various intervention um, from all um, from the government to the private sector and right now um, most consensus from what I've heard is towards A3 that's a U-shaped recovery which is a gradual recovery while we wish for a V-shaped I think uh, that's what people are um, talking about, but it's still anyone's um, guess. So, with so saying all this, with so many unknowns, uh, my opinion is that we should, uh, what we can do is that um, we can make the best use of this crisis because we have to play with the, uh, you know, hand that we have served. We have to play with the cards that we have in the hand. And end of this, when the world comes out to this crisis, there are going to be definitely winners and losers. And a lot depends on what we do. A lot depends on where we choose to be because it's a level playing field, right? So that's um, how I see it. I think the demand and destruction, behavioral changes is there. We're not able to assess it today. And in this crisis, right, we have to basically, um, I think balance today and tomorrow while we have to do all the necessary things to survive today um, things like cash cost cash is the bloodline of you know uh, any company but we also have to be really um, i think working hard to look at what are the possible opportunities what are the changes we need to make to come out stronger tomorrow so i think it's a very important thing to look at uh, the combination of uh, today and tomorrow well, I say tomorrow it is not necessarily going and investing a lot of money for future projects. I think it's about doing small experiments and thinking diligently on what um, and learning through the experiments on what could be the changes, what could be the new opportunities that um, we can uh, have for our own businesses. So when I look at it, I think this challenge, um, when we are in a crisis or a challenging times, I think clarity um, there's more clarity. We are aware of really what's most essential. And a lot of the noise and the old uh, baggage that we have, especially in old organizations, um, tend to be very, very clear. So I think it's an opportunity to use this crisis to reinvent ourselves, to re restructure our entire efficiencies, cost structures, to really come out uh, much stronger. 
uh, in the long run. So I think here, normally the tendency is that when there's a big challenge, we tend to sometimes freeze up, tend to not take any uh, risk. But I think playing it safe in today's environment is actually more risky. And again, like I said before, it's not about spending a lot of money or making investments, but it's about making, trying out small, quick experiments to see what's learning, what's working, learning from those and actually change the direction. The nature of the current uncertainty means we actually don't know uh, what is going to happen. And the only way to get information is through action, taking immediate steps, with the best information and uh, that we have starting small and learning way through this uh, chaos so i think uh, from an organization standpoint um, at least from our experience what we have done is that we have uh, first focused on cash because without uh, cash an organization can't uh, be there in the future so extreme focus on cash and then second is cost, which is connected again to cash, but also has a completely uh, long-term impact. And when we looked at cost, we looked at cost, not just from cutting costs, but actually looking at how do we bring a high level of efficiency? I think as a lot of you would have seen that, you know, many of the organizations in the West, especially in manufacturing or even in offices, they're far less people than us. If we had four people on a machine, they probably would have one. They were one person manning three um, um, folding machines. So I think, you know, what would have taken probably India 15 years to go to that level of productivity when we are forced to because of simply of human resource costs going up. I think this crisis uh, will push up productivity levels. So I think uh, this is an opportunity to look at not just cost from a cost perspective, but to look at how we can really increase our efficiency productivity in all aspects of what we do, uh, including using um, automation and digitization in everything that uh, we do. So I think uh, cash cost, um, how do we maximize revenue, whether it's from current sources or new sources at the shortest uh, time? These are, I think, some of the um, big steps that uh, need to be taken and many of us are taking it. And to basically use in this uncertain times, um, you know, how do we collaborate better? I think the way we are actually working is completely changing. Uh, if you look at it, even customers, including government departments are doing uh, video conferencing for RFPs. Client trust is building over video conferences versus it is to be always personal meetings. So all this is, I think, happening around us and these all are here to stay. In the same time, coming back to efficiencies, multitasking, multi-scaling people in the organization, uh, having uh, supervisors running the machine, cleaning their own workplaces, uh, office staff trading various jobs so it's not in silos. I think all this has happened because of the shock which has come to the system uh, uh, today. And it's a lot about unlearning and relearning. Now, coming back to uh, print specifically, um, I think if you look at it, many printed products uh, are going through a transition. If you see the government has already announced that annual uh, reports are not mandatory. Uh, and I think there's been a direction last year that the government departments did not issue some products like dairies and calendars that we have already seen. Uh, if you look at the newspaper industry, which has been very hard hit, but even hard hit, not so much from a print side, though even print is reduced because of pagination and some distribution issues. But if you look at advertising revenues, it's almost zero. And as you know, newspapers without advertising cannot survive. Just yesterday, I was talking to some of the retail chains um, who tend to be one of the large advertisers. I had anywhere estimates of anywhere between 90% cut to 40% cut in advertising revenues from their budgets for this year. So we can imagine what could happen, um, you know, if it goes in this uh, direction. Of course, we already have had many um, um, forms like magazines already declining. And I think this is just accelerating um, uh, that whole digitization trend. I think the discussion trend in everything, whether it's transaction, learning, uh, entertainment, uh, reading, all of that is just compressed uh, because of what this pandemic has really um, done. So I'm looking at um, 
significant impact and drop to consumption um, on the newspaper side. Magazines anyway were actually going down, and I think that's going to accelerate. Also, things like you know the bank statements, the printed et etc., which are already on a downtrend. I think that's again accelerating. And when it comes to books that are mixed views, I think uh, there's a strong view that the habit of reading also could have increased when it comes to because of the pandemic. And uh, we yet to see. We are seeing strong uh, demand for books, um, and I'm talking about uh, trade books. Uh, education books anyway is on track, but we have to see in the long run how that will be impacted. So I think the books, from my view, uh, is still very strong. On the uh, packaging side, um, I think right now there's a lot of pent up demand. I think packaging will depend a lot on the economic situation of the country, which we have to see what's going to happen, especially if there are going to be huge job losses and salary cuts then consumption is definitely uh, going to be impacted. So it would be some amount of downgrades in kind of products by, so the nature of packaging uh, may change. Yesterday I was reading an article where one of the IT staff who's um, uh, had a pay cut was buying some amount of local uh, you know, chips versus package um, uh, regular chips. So I think some shifts could happen uh, there. So I think from my perspective, the future is about um, really taking tough decisions, which were difficult to take in normal times, taking those hard decisions, having focus on what really is important for the organization uh, going forward and remove all the rest of the noise. And I think, um, I believe long, in the long run, uh, we will come, India is very resilient. Indian entrepreneurs are very resilient. We, I think, have come up because of our own effort or persistence. And I think we will come out very strongly. But for now, I think it's being uh, you know, clear about what's important for the short term while constantly learning every day of you know, changes that uh, we need to make to come out strong in the long run because it's a very, very dynamic uh, environment. Uh, so that's all from me. Thank you for uh, giving me this time. I wish you all the best and uh, we all come out as an industry stronger. And I'd like to try again, thank all of you in the paper trade. You have been backbone of our industry and look forward to continued support and partnering for us all to come out strong as an industry. Thank you. Thank you, Gautam Bhai. Uh, thank you so much. Deepak, sir, can you please introduce our second yeah, speaker, yeah. sir? Thanks, uh, Gautam. I think that was a very realistic and insightful uh, presentation from you. So uh, I hope we don't go down the path of that minus 9% 9, 9 where <laughs> one of the experts have matlab, told us we'll all be doomed if that happens. Anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, moving on to the next speaker, Mr. Ganesh Gala, fondly called as Sunil, is a uh, pillar of India's leading book publisher, Mrs. Uh, Navneet Education Limited. Inducted into the business at a very young age, Mr. Sunil handles various portfolios in his organization, which is, includes legal, taxation, finance, HR, Apart from strategizing the company's interests in diversification into online education, distance education, stationary products, real estate, and NBFC. His passion, courage, commitment, risk-taking ability, and foresight has enabled his company to reach greater heights. Adapting to change has been his mantra, especially when it involves technology or process. Mr. Gala not only takes bold, pioneering decisions, but follows it up to ensure that the mission is accomplished. A true, as a true leader, he has always led from the front, apart from building great teams for his organization. For the paper trading community, it will be interesting to note that Navneet Education consumes but converts more than 1 lakh tons per annum of paper and paperboard uh, through their own three owned plants in Ahmedabad, Silvasa, and Vasai, and numerous outsourcing units. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure in introducing the dawn of the education Publishing industry in India, Mr. Sunil Gala, Managing Director, Navneet Education Limited. Over to you, Mr. Sunil. Thank you, Mr. Deepak, and good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to thank uh, FPTA and particularly Shamji Vekaria to have invited me uh, for, on my perspective uh, on future of paper usage in publishing and stationary business where we are in for last six decades almost. Uh, 
I will be presenting few slides, very, very basic slides uh, for the total audience to understand it properly. So what I would like to take is uh, everyone here present today, uh, of course, would be knowing the usage of paper segment wise. But to give relevance to my discussion today, uh, I would like to reiterate uh, major usage, particularly in print and publishing, rather publishing and stationery. Uh, I would like to break up the usage pattern a little bit for more clarity, which is as far as publishing is concerned, the paper is used, uh, major of the paper is used for textbooks, which normally government or few of the private publishers uses and which are prescribed in the schools across the country. The other segment in publishing is supplementary books or uh, many people call it wraparound books. And these are uh, books which <clears throat> normally publishes. One minute, Uncle, uh, can you say a little bit loud? It's, uh, the voice okay. is low. Okay. So I was saying that the usage of paper in publishing is basically uh, breaks up into two, which is uh, publishing of textbooks. Is this okay now? No, sir. Uh, okay now? A bit of loud uh, mic near you. Hello. Huh. No. Am I audible? It's very low. Can you increase the volume of your laptop or something? Am I audible now? Yeah. yeah. Now that yeah. is okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So what I was trying to say that in publishing, uh, there are two areas, which is one is textbooks which normally all the state governments and a few publishers across the st uh, in across India, they use the paper for print of textbooks, which are finally recommended in the schools. Uh, the other segment, which is supplementary books, uh, don't come, uh, supplementary books. Uh, we publishers like Navneet, uh, which we have the maximum usage for over the last six decades now. And, for, and then the third segment, apart from publishing, which is stationary. So stationary uh, also as now, like Navni, there are so many uh, small converters, big converters in the country. So both the segments, be it publishing or stationary, have different usage pattern. Uh, today, I will try and discuss both together, as I believe the challenges and the problems are same for both the industry. Uh, you all also may to know, would like to know, or may know rather, uh, the <clears throat> overall growth in publishing is around 6% per annum, CAGR over the last so many years. But that's understand that's in value terms. In If we adjust to the inflation, uh, the volume growth would be hardly one or two percentage. Whereas in stationary, as we all know, the growth is around 6% in terms of volume. So this is finally what I wanted to say, the growth finally in both these segments, be it publishing or stationary, is in a single digit. Now I would like to rather share a few of my concerns or the challenges that we have during this. Uh, pandemic uh, in particular uh, challenges are of course forever but this pandemic pandemic has really brought in different challenges or so many challenges that no one knows uh, what will happen next so i would like to take you one by one as a publisher or a stationary manufacturer today we have no clarity on when the schools or colleges will reopen uh, as it has been said by a few states that now it will reopen in the month of September. Uh, it all depends when the pandemic or the situation comes under control. If it comes under control by June, then I agree that it may reopen in September or so. Uh, as you all know that keeping social distancing in the school or colleges is hardly possible. And therefore, uh, time for the education in the current year seems very, very limited for all the schools and colleges. Now, because of that, as a publisher or as a stationary manufacturer, 
uh, we have no clarity on what to print or what to manufacture. If we, as per our earlier plans, if we would have, if we would manufacture or print, uh, we do not know whether we will have to carry it over for one year because all of you know that it is a seasonal business and therefore either carry forward for one year or it, we may have to finally scrap it. And so therefore, I believe all publishers or stationary manufacturers like us uh, would not have clarity on what to print and what to manufacture uh, right now. The another problem after the lockdowns or uh, unlocking happened, uh, what we realized a couple of our units did start but there is an inefficient supply chain. As you all know, red zone, green zone, yellow zone. So all the suppliers of various raw materials to us are not able to supply in time. Therefore, it, is, it becomes really impossible for us to complete the production. Uh, that is the, one of the new concerns that we have re uh, seen recently. Now, as you know, because of the migrant labor, be it or because of insufficient supply uh, of <clears throat> various raw materials. Uh, as per our uh, factual position, the production uh, has reduced to almost 20 to, 20 to 50% at different plants of ours. I'm sure that would be the case with many of us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, on the humanitarian ground, uh, we have to pay salaries to all our uh, workers. And therefore, I see that even if we do not want our fixed cost to these sales or fixed cost as a percentage is increasing tremendously. Another thing that we recently saw in last one week, uh, presently, of course, uh, to sell in India is rather impossible. But uh, as far as exports are concerned, that continues uh, around 10 days post lockdown. That is around first week of April, we could start. But of late in last one week, what we saw that transportation has become a big challenge. Uh, now, I still do not know whether we have still actually not bought paper during lockdown. So I do not know about the input transportation cost, but output, it has already risen by 20 to 25%. And what I'm hearing today, that it will increase to almost 40 to 50% for the rest of the year, up, at least up to December. Uh, that is going to bring lots of pressure. Apart from paying higher prices, cost is one thing. Availability of transport also has been a big challenge. So what I'm trying to say, overall conversion cost will increase, has increased uh, to all the converters, the, be it book publisher, be it uh, uh, printers, be it stationary manufacturers. Overall, the cost escalations have really risen tremendously. Now, having said this, these are the concerns, schools reopening very, very late, uh, as far as we are concerned, because we focus, our major focus has been the schools. Uh, and as I said, that schools are likely to open in September. I should also remind you of one thing that, uh, if we take example of China, Wuhan, uh, where schools were the last uh, institution to open among all activities. And as I said, uh, keeping social distancing is a big, big challenge. Uh, with that uh, thing in mind, I feel as far as textbook business is concerned, though Mr. Gautam may not uh, agree with my view, uh, but textbooks, I foresee around 15 to 20% uh, there will be reduction. Uh, main reason I would say that the pre-primary and primary both these segments are not likely to either open at all, particularly pre-primary, and uh, primary will be re really very, very less. And as various state governments uh, or maybe center may decide really not to press hard or not to really focus more on, uh, just give them basic education, uh, may not provide them textbooks. Now, the segment that Navneet is catering, supplementary books, there we foresee huge reduction in the current year. Uh, and why? Because supplementary books is non-discretionary. And uh, there, there the decision of schools to recommend more books or parents to buy more books for their students 
there are various reasons why they may not go for it in the current year particularly when the session starts almost three or four months later in the year. So they will have very, very limited period to really learn, teach in the schools. And therefore, we believe usage of supplementary books will reduce drastically in the current year. As far as paper stationery is concerned, because of the time period that, as I just said, uh, three to four months will be lesser for the current academic year, the usage pattern will also reduce. And I believe paper stationery will also degrow by 20 to 30 percent. Uh, overall, this is the position that we foresee at Navneet uh, for the current uh, year. Uh, as far as future is concerned, I will believe that uh, we will come back to the same normal in single digit growth every year. So uh, having said the challenges, uh, we being listed companies, but I know there are so many small converters, unorganized uh, convert. <coughs> at an unorganized level. Uh, I feel it is my duty on behalf of the whole fraternity, uh, what kind of support that the industry would aspire to have. So, as I said, most converters are unorganized. This includes, there are so many small publishers. I know there are so, so many print, uh, printers, small printers from single machine to multiple machines. And likewise, many stationary manufacturers. So I believe now sustainability for them in the current year is going to be very, very challenging. Uh, big paper mills with the great balance sheet or strong balance sheets, uh, they may be able to really sustain or they, there'll be banks to support them or many institutions to support them. But for the small converters to have sustainability is very, very important for the whole trade, I believe. It's not only for the current year, but for the long term to come. So sustainability, uh, all the relevant people in the industry, be it paper mills, traders, everyone, uh, I strongly request uh, to look at this uh, sustainability uh, of all the converters. Uh, now, one of the biggest thing that I would also request uh, or suggest, uh, as now as we all know that we have been talking that China uh, negativity, and positivity for countries like India. We know we are in exports business for last 25 odd years. Uh, we know that there is huge demand, huge opportunity to us. Apart from government supporting various initiatives, I believe uh, if paper is available at international rates to all the exporters, then only we will be able to sustain ourselves or we'll be able to compete in the international market. So this is another area where uh, the whole paper trade needs to really focus. Uh, the growth percentage, I believe, as Navneet had almost 30 to 40 percent growth over the last three years in paper exports, paper stationary exports, I believe the similar kind of growth is expected for many manufacturers like Navneet. So all paper mills really need to support uh, all such exporters to supply paper at a very, very, I would say at an international trend markets. So these are the overall thoughts uh, as far as print and stationery is concerned. Uh, now, I would like to, I was also told that what are the effect of digital or online education on paper, uh, my views. So Navneet is into digital business for last almost 10 years now. And we are seeing little bit of traction in the field that we are, which is we cater to only uh, state level curriculum schools, uh, but unfortunately still not covering CBSE, ICSE schools. So we are seeing little traction in there, but simultaneously as a publisher, uh, I know that publisher have to think on digital products and particularly reading material. That, that no one can stop that reading material has to go, uh, go digital. And simultaneously schools have to remain relevant by adopting digital technology simultaneously by using print products. Uh, having said this, uh, everyone would have a question in their mind, uh, whether will it replace print? Now, I would like to show you some numbers uh, by which we'll uh, know the answer that in short term, term, I don't think so, it is the concern. 
So here I would, these are broad numbers. These are not, but real to actual, I would say. So for everyone uh, may know or may not know, but total we have 15 lakhs or 1.5 million schools in the country of which only 350,000 are private schools. Now see the numbers. The regional medium schools, which are 250,000, understand that all these regional medium 250,000 are following state level curriculum, whereas English teaching schools are around 100,000 in number. But again, see the number that out of 100,000 English medium schools, there are only 30,000 CBSE, ICSE schools, whereas 70 odd thousand are SSE schools. Now, as I said earlier, that SSC schools are not yet seeing traction in digital or online education. So what we are talking today, what we are reading in the papers today, majorly of online learning, is basically for those 30,000 elite schools in the country who are able to impart education online. So what I'm trying to say that there are so many limitations in SSC schools, state curriculum, be it only I'm talking about private government, it's a different ball game or their agenda whenever they get into it. But even in private schools, more than 320,000 schools will not be, are not rather have gone on digital or online. There is opportunity, but uh, when we do not know, there are many, many limitations. Uh, finally, I believe at Navneet that it is little long term for SSC schools to go online or use uh, lots of digital products and replace, we believe it will complement any product that we bring out uh, digitally will complement the textbooks. And in short, I would like to say that usage of paper is not at a risk as far as education is concerned for next couple of years, I am sure, at, in particularly country like India. So with this, uh, I gave all my views that uh, I was asked by, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, later have any questions uh, on the subject. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sunil, sir, yeah. for your presentation. Deepak, sir? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sunil. Uh, so I hope uh, the, some of the projections that you have given on some of the categories uh, don't uh, pan out the way you have projected it and we come out of this faster and stronger. Thank you. I think so. Thank you. Our next speaker uh, uh, is a very uh, uh, and uh, positive person and ever smiling and very, very popular with the uh, trading fraternity, Mr. Narendra Paruchuri. Uh, Mr. Narendra Paruchuri can be described as India's evangelist for innovation and quality in printing. This has allowed Pragati to grow from strength to strength. The logo of Pragati, of fingerprint, itself speaks of uniqueness. Mr. Narendra Paruchiri graduated in chemical engineering from Manipal Institute of Technology in 1975 and worked in a metal finishing company for two and a half years. He then joined Pragati Offset Private Limited, a commercial printing press started by his father, Sri Paruchiri Hanumanta Rao in 1962. Mr. Narendra has constantly upgraded the technology and professional approach for Pragati. He has made Pragati an extension of the customer's team rather than just being another supplier. Not surprisingly, Pragati is the winner of the highest number of awards domestically and internationally as well. He is ably supported by his brother Mahendra and sons Harsha, Hemant and niece Swati. Their hard work and keenness to excel has placed Pragati where it is today among the best printers in the world. Winner of the SAPI International Printer of the Year Award in 2006, 2008, and 2010. Married to Dr. Shashikala, Mr. Narendra enjoys his leisure time with his family and playing with his grandchildren. Friends, I'm happy to introduce Mr. Narendra Paruchuri to you. Over to you, Mr. Narendra. Sir, I think you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have one more chair. Yeah, okay, start. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to uh, share thoughts on this particular webinar. Um, I think the, the, the scenario has already been explained by the previous speakers. Unfortunately, I agree with our chief ministers now 
that we have to learn to live with corona you cannot um, covid you really cannot say we will do whatever we want and we will shut down and lock down and it will go on forever so we are all coming to terms and coming back to uh, terms how to work at 50% 60% and 70% in all the previous uh, uh, issues which happened in the world whether it's 911 or dot com bust or uh, lehman brothers or junk bonds or anything we knew where the bottom was in this particular situation we don't even know where the bottom is as gautam said we really don't know whether it is 1.8% plus or 9% minus we really don't know and this we will know only after we open up and see how each of the sectors is actually responding um cinema halls will not open malls will not open schools and colleges will not open so a lot of things are uh, still uh, and actually i essentially think everybody is an expert because actually nobody went through this in their lifetime before so as far as our industry is concerned pragati is both in commercial printing and in packaging we expect commercial printing to take a beating the reason is everybody again has to find where they are and then we plan everything and then go forward but whereas packaging is concerned we sincerely think it will come back reasonably fast maybe 2 2 3 months or 4 months we should be back uh, to a reasonable level and that's what we we think will happen with the packaging as jack ma the owner of alibaba said very very clearly and i i i 100% concur with him that year 2021 is a year of survival we will look at the balance sheet next year this year dubra nahi chahiye so we have to make sure that we are running our businesses making sure we pay our payments and then go ahead with that and um, as i said it is an opportunity we have because of the china negativity but at the same time the minus point with us in india is so many things we can do let's say i can do a box we need a plastic insert we are running around so there are a lot of other things which have to improve but the 1.3 billion people and the big market is is really an an invitation for any foreign company to come in and we sincerely think a lot more companies will come in and so the printing and packaging will grow but this year in progress 2021 seem to be a very very difficult one and um, we have to go through it and we really cannot uh, uh, sit at home and uh, worry about covid i i sincerely think all of us should uh, make sure that we follow all the rules and regulations laid down by the government to make sure that we we don't invite covid but we have to go about our jobs and then work out and then see how best we can come out of this thing. thank you so much thank you narendra sir thank you yeah uh, thank you mr narendra on that positive note huh? we'll move on to our next speaker next speaker ramesh ji as he is fondly referred to i feel is the dhirubhai of printing and packaging he stands for world class scale and quality and innovation and his organization fully reflects that today he also has been one of the pioneers in the packaging industry to earn the trust of a private equity investor something that is very difficult to do for many of the printing and packaging companies today Mr Kejriwal is a commerce graduate and a qualified printing technologist. In 1996 he started Parkson's packaging from a small gala measuring 1500 square feet in Daman with a vision to be one of the best. He steered the company to attain leadership leadership status in the packaging industry. Parkson's presently has a pan India presence with state six state of the art manufacturing plants with an annual turnover of approximately 900 crores. for the paper trading fraternity who are not aware they convert close to 1 lakh 20000 tons of packaging board every year 
there are very few mills in the country who make board more than what Pakistan's convert. Mr. Kejriwal was also the president of the Bombay Master Printers Association. Under Mr. Kejriwal's leadership, Parkinson's won Print Week Company of the Year awards in 2011 and 2016. And also the distinction, he also has the distinction of being the first Indian packaging company promoter to feature on the cover of the Heidelberg magazine and Forbes magazine in the Hidden Gems list in 2015. Friends, presenting to you the Dhirubhai of Printing and Packaging, Mr. Ramesh Kejriwal, Chairman, Parkinson's Packaging. Over to you, Ramesh ji. Can we have Mr. Ramesh Kejriwal? Can you hear me? Yes, Lord. sir. Uh, good morning, Deepak ji. I'm really humbled with your kind remarks. I would uh, continue to be Ramesh Kejriwal and not <laughs> anybody else. So first of all, let me thank uh, FPTA for inviting me on this uh, webinar. And uh, it's honor to share the webinar with all the eminent uh, panelists. And also I would like to thank all the participants who have taken time to join the webinar. As everybody knows and everybody has spelled out that we are going through unprecedented challenging times. And as Narendra said, that these challenging times are unknown when it will end. However, we have to be positive and we have to look at how we can overcome this challenge with all our resources at our end. My talk would be limited to uh, from the perspective of folding cartons, converting, and I would like to be talking specifically on those points. The importance of packaging is known to everybody and the growth of it in the last decade has been tremendous, more than double digit Kager. And as you all know, then when after lockdown, when there was some unlocking, packaging was one of the first industry to be allowed to operate. However, there were challenges, but the importance of it is very clear from the very fact that it was one of the very first industries to start operations. I think my talk, I would limit, limit into four uh, topics. First, I would like to share a little bit about the current scenario. Secondly, what is the impact in the short term for the converters? Thirdly, how they should look at the industry in the long term? And a little bit, I would like to talk uh, from the paper traders perspective, how they should look at uh, the paper industry and the converters. Since uh, many of your participants are from paper industry. Talking about the current scenario, I would say that I would uh, break it into demand, supply, and operations, including financial side. If you look at demand in terms of the two months of lockdown, I think many of the essential products like hygiene, pharmaceutical have been able to ramp up up to 40-50%. But all other non-essentials have hardly begun any production because of the fact that many of their customers have not started. So overall, if I were to look uh, currently the scenario in terms of the capacity that is being used for folding gardens would be around 30%. That is my guess. Coming to the supply side, I think there have been challenges, both in terms of production, supply chain. However, I think from the work in progress, the finished goods and the production, whatever we could do, I think supply has been able to match the demand. As we all know that there has been no uh, non-availability of any goods and most of the goods have been available in the market as per the demand. Talking about operations, I would say that it has been a big challenge. Even when we got the permission to start operation, there were challenges initially in terms of uh, logistics, getting the paper, supplying 
to the customer through proper transportation. And then of course you had the major problem of labor, which has now accentuated after the departure of many migrant laborers, where you see that a lot of uh, contract laborers have disappeared and you are having challenges on that side in a big way. In the short term, now coming to the short term view of what the packaging con converter should be focusing on. Before that, I would also like to add on the financial side that as everybody has mentioned that the approach should be to have minimum cost and whatever way efficiently we can work in the system that will only be able to survive. We have to look at our cash flow very critically because cash is king and it has been more now than at any other time. So we have to continue to pay back our loan with interest. We have to continue to pay salary to our employees to keep them for future. So cash has to be monitored extremely well by all organizations. And folding carton being a capital intensive industry, there have been large investment by all the converters. So there is a huge commitment to banks, et cetera. So I think cash is going to be the key for the future survival of any uh, company. What is it that in the short term, uh, the packaging converter should do? I think the dependence on labor has to be minimum. As rightly said uh, by uh, the panelists that we have to work with less number of people, like on a printing machine, if you were having four or three people, we have to work with two people. Similarly on folder grower, if we had three people, we have to work with two people and achieve the same kind of efficiency. So we have to work with more efficiency. At the same time, we have to look at automation and we have to really work out ROI on small innovation, uh, small automation and bigger automation. And I think the key will be automation in the future. In the short term also, we have to give proper training to all our workforce in terms of educating them in the new protocols, how to work. Because as you know that most of the packaging converters, small and medium, even large, there's a huge space constraint. So within the space constraint, how you are going to work with social distancing and other protocols that you have to work. So we have to con continuously educate ourselves how we are able to do that. Fragility of supply chain is a big issue in the short term. As you all know that paper mills have begun production after a month of uh, lockdown and that also in a small measure. So the supply is a, a paper is a concern at the moment. At the same time, supplying to customer is also a challenge in terms of transport, whether it's in cost or time frame. So we'll have to work very hard on logistic and supply chain. Coming to the long term, I think long term, I believe that packaging is going to stay. As Narendra said, that packaging will bounce back. And I'm sure that uh, within a period of, if not six months, but within a period of one year, we should bounce back to the normal growth of 10% plus in the folding carton segment. So that is bound to be there and we have to prepare ourselves for that, taking measures to survive in the short term. But there would be a shift in the consumer behavior. There may be certain industries which will demand certain products. There'll be a low demand in certain kind of industry. And the behavior of the customer post COVID will undergo a change. So one has to think how the customer behavior is going to be there in future and mold ourselves accordingly. Secondly, we have to look at innovation. What better product we can give to the customer, both from cost perspective and also from hygiene perspective. Because hygiene will play a very, very important role. Thirdly, I would say that we have to invest very prudently. Every rupee of capex spent should be evaluated in a very, very critical manner. I know that we have been prudent in uh, investing capital, 
but i think now it will become very relevant because you never know when you might face challenge and when you have high investment and if you are not able to operate at reasonable capacity you are going to have a lot of uh, financial strain so i think in the long term i am positive that the industry will come back and we have to prepare ourselves for that and start thinking in a different way and out of the box how we can innovate how we can look at different kind of things at the same time i think this is a time for introspection for us to look at our suppliers and our customers we have to look at our suppliers who will give me uh, who will be like having partnership mold in our thinking we don't have to look them as just suppliers but we have to take them as partners similarly we have to assess our customers very critically there are customers who will pay you the right price there are customers who will not pay you the right price there are customers who will take 90 days to 120 to 150 days credit and there are customers who may not pay you in time at all or may be risky so we have to this is the time when we have lot of spare time to ponder as to how we should look at our suppliers and our customers so this is my view on the long term coming to the last point since there are many uh, paper related uh, distributors and traders i think paper traders distributor play a very integral part and in, in the whole growth of converting industry and they are as rightly said they are at the back backbone of our business they perform a very crucial duty of connecting with the paper mills and as you know there are a lot of small medium converters who have no direct connection with the paper mills so they give immense service by connecting the, the with the paper mills and i think their role will become more critical in future because even they will have to assess who their customers are like a distributor will have to assess who the trader that he is dealing with similarly a trader will have to deal with and assess his customer but because as you know today the times have become very critical the whole folding cart and paper board value approximately as per my guess is about 12000 crore of rupees and even if you assume two months of credit period there is a 25000 crore of money floating which is very critical for everybody to examine what kind of risk it has what kind of uh, payment cycle it has so all this will have to be examined very critically thirdly i think the paper distribution will become more localized in terms of logistics issue that we might face so the converters will prefer to have buying from paper mills or distributor who are closer rather than farther so i think that will also be a thing which will span out more critically in the future so i think these are some of the thoughts and i believe that the whole supply chain right from paper mills to paper traders to converter and customers is an integral part of our uh, growth story of india and we have, we play a very important role and i would like to thank everybody once again and we we would like to work as partners in business and i hope that covid challenge comes through sooner than later and we bounce back again and with these thoughts i would like to thank everybody once again thank you very much thank you ramesh sir thank you for your insight deepak sir up yeah. to you thank you ramesh ji ha uh, short term challenging long term positive we will take that advice cash flow and money management is the key so uh, i could see mr narendra applauding you after your uh, presentation so we He's will friend of mine yeah we will take i will come back to you during the question and answer session thank you okay friends we move on to our last set of speakers uh, they are from the corrugation industry uh, i am glad to introduce to, to you two highly successful stalwarts from the corrugation industry first mr sandeep wadwa is the cmd of wadpack private limited a leading manufacturer of corrugated boxes in india 
He has over 29 years of experience in the field of corrugated uh, packaging. Sandeep has been instrumental in, in introducing new concepts in the corrugated industry in India in the early 1990s, such as glued manufacturers joint, quality index, ISO 9000 and 14000. He currently holds the position of president of Indian Corrugated Case Manufacturers Association. Our second speaker in this category is Mr. Kirit Modi. After completing his post-graduation at one of the premier management schools in India in 1971, he handled various assignments in corporate environment and paper industry in the senior management position. He was bestowed Distinguished Alumnus Award in 2012 by the Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata, for his entrepreneurial success and vision. Having pioneered the concept of pan-India distribution of craft paper in 1979, he ventured into packaging industry as a measure of forward integration in 1991. He has created an all India presence in this industry with 10 manufacturing locations in the last 30 years. He currently oversees the management of Horizon Packs Group, one of the leading players in the industry. He was the founder president of Indian Corrugated Case Manufacturers Association and is still associated as President Emeritus. Over to you, Sandeep and Kirit. Thank you, Deepak. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting us to the, the session of the FTPA, uh, FPTA, uh, and thank you, panelists. Uh, you know, I think most of the points have been covered uh, by the other panelists. Uh, and yeah, just a minute. I'm just trying to share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. So uh, I think uh, just to say that the Indian corrugated box manufacturers uh, cover primarily the primary and the secondary packaging. Uh, we have been uh, in this field for the last uh, 48 years and are a very important uh, uh, supply chain, uh, very important to the supply chain. Uh, and so we're just going to cover a little bit of background about uh, ICMA and what's the post-COVID scenario. So here it is. I am trying to, yep. So ICMA was founded in 2009 to represent the interest of the corrugated manufacturers using auto manufacturing process. Currently our membership is about over about 200 and which represents of the 50% of the corrugated boxes sold in India. Uh, the corrugated box industry stands at about 28,000 crores, consumes about between 6 to 6.5 million metric tons of craft liner, which is the virgin grade, test liners, which is called 22 to 32 BF, and the fluting medium, which is 14 to 20 BF. The industry generally grows, uh, growth rate is generally between 1.5 to 2 times the GDP. And this is pre-COVID, as I must qualify. Uh, it's a very vast number of presents. So we have over 15,000 units in the semi-auto and auto space, uh, uh, while the automatic manufacturers just about roughly uh, 350 and counting. I've also given the distribution of the, you know, real uh, consumption of corrugated boxes across the regions. So the north and the west are very similar to each other, about 30%. The south is about 28% and the east is about 12%. Uh, and I now hand it over to Mr. Kirat Modi to take us further. Kirat Bhai. Uh, on the post COVID scenario uh, and the national lockdown. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Thank you, uh, TP as well as the panelists for, you know, having us. And, you know, uh, Sandeep has given a short background on ICMA. I will just uh, cover what is going to be the scenario post, you know, we open the lockdown. So this is a, a global pandemic of unprecedented nature. 
nothing of this sort has happened ever before and hence we are dealing with basically unknown unknowns and every pandemic has shown to change the course of history and i'm sure this one also will definitely change the history in a very big way so what is the situation on ground now we are facing massive disruption all across we don't know how long these lockdowns will continue we are going to be in lockdown 4 and when we will return to normalcy and what is the new normal whether we will go back to the old normal or we will have the new normal and the impact of this scenario on the profitability and liquidity that is going to be the key issues now about the craft paper industry which is our main raw material what are the ch- challenges we are facing so one challenge we are facing is the you know covid situation the health crisis other thing is the availability of craft paper in terms of its raw material as well as the price the local waste collection which is the main primary raw material has come to almost zero in lockdown which is impacting the availability then there is import ban on the low grades so paper mills are struggling to get you know enough materials from the local the container movement has been impacted as well as the you know uh, the freight container freight has also gone up and there are challenges for you know imported occ grades prices that also is shot up it is shot up by almost 100 dollars uh, because of the collection of those grades in usa and europe have completely stopped because of the lockdowns and overall local freight input and output freight locally within india is also going to be impacted and as if this is not enough we are facing the challenges of the devaluation of rupee almost uh, rupee has lost 7% and we don't know what is going to happen way forward so that is also you know increase the landed cost of the paper you know to the converters so converters are basically facing challenges on both you know availability as well as prices and not only paper we are seeing the impact on other key consumables which this industry is consuming like starch ink briquettes strapping rolls so everything is going to impact and on top of that we are going to face a massive issue on the labor costs and this industry corporate packaging industry depends heavily on the labor and we are seeing already the challenges in terms of you know the workers not reporting back those who have gone to their native places plus the who are available are demanding much higher wages so that is another major you know impact we are facing and the most you know uh, impact which is going to be created by profitability as well as liquidity uh, various panelists have already highlighted that so what i'm going to say is this that you know we have to be very careful about both profitability as well as liquidity and although the government has come out with some measures now you know to help the liquidity situation but i feel we feel our association feels that 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 is only partly handled and we require the uh, equip you know the enterprise support not only the liquidity support and that enterprise support is still not forthcoming and that is going to be very critical in the you know, days to come the consumer sentiments are also you know changing the consumer behaviors will change uh, consumer staples will be better off discretionary sectors will take a hit so we do not know how much the impact is going to be there on different sectors so we will yet to see the impact once we open the lockdown so in short you know what are the post consideration post lockdown considerations the cash flow is going to be impacted badly there's going to be price pressure demand will be lower and there's going to be logistic disruption so friends we have to deal with multiple challenges in this pandemic there are many moving parts and how these moving parts will pan out we have to see
but ultimately we need to you know focus on as we ramesh ji said on survival and then later talk about the growth first is the survival and second is the growth so that's in short i wanted to say from the uh, our industry view point but having uh, been a paper distributor for 20 years so i would like to add one last comment for my uh, paper distributor friends that this post you know this lockdown situation one thing is very critical they must ascertain is the risk appetite and the liquidity is going to play a very important part before extending credit further they have to be very clear about what kind of risk they are taking and what is the you know cash flow situation of the customers and see they have the enough liquidity to you know survive and grow thank you very much thank you that's it deepak that's from us yeah thank you thank comment. you kirit ji thank you sandeep uh hiren back to you he wanted to add a comment sir please yeah as i've just said that the government has been talking about atmanirbhar this is the time to really be atmanirbhar you cannot depend on anybody else but yourself uh that's my only last parting comment thank you well said sir <laughs> uh, now over to venkat sir he is our past president mr a n malai who is actually fondly known as venkat sir you know trade faculty throughout india he shall be uh, uh, answer, uh, putting some questions from the audience as well as from what we received over email in the last two three days so before i give it to venkat sir uh, i just want to know uh, let the audience know that there is a poll going on and you can put your uh, vote to that and at the end of the session we will be announcing the result of the poll over to venkat sir fpta is overwhelmed by the presence of such luminaries with us with these remarks i would like to pose the first question to mr gautam pai sir you are present in multiple verticals including security printing commercial printing packaging newspaper publishing and so on and in your business you would be dealing with government bodies banks large corporates and so on in this background what is your advice on tackling unprecedented wide fluctuation in paper prices as the cost of paper plays a major part in the overall value of the product do you feel that indian industry should give a price validity for a fixed period of time that is the first part of the question the second is what is your advice to traders who seem to be nimble footed to tread in a path which they are not comfortable with you are traded in so many paths what is your advice for a trader to follow you sir i think uh, in, in today's time when we are actually facing a unprecedented situation basically there's no past experience i think it's a completely a partnership approach i don't think any of the old norms we should take as uh, valid today so if basically the prices have gone up and like uh, in the question mentioned price paper uh, board is a major portion of the cost of uh, production of a printed product if the price has gone up unreasonable levels we have to go back and work with the customer and it's my feeling in today's time everyone understands the situation and if this time they don't work with you they will never will so i think uh, today we have to go case by case we have to we have the own experiences where things have been uh, prices have gone up or there's been disruptions and we find in this environment customers are a lot more understanding accommodative and i think for all of us today whether it's from the paper traders or the paper mill the printers and the packaging converters and the customers it's to find out solutions and work together so someone else in the uh, chat asked a question about any uh suggestions for uh, the paper trade i said it should be a partnership approach where we work towards finding a joint solution um as far as i think the last question about um, you know uh, what's the path to trade i think it comes back to earlier what i was saying uh, in the earlier presentation is plan for the worst and hope for the best uh, like narendra said i think self reliance is what we've been told to we have to find a way to survive 
uh, work on aggressively today uh, you know minimizing uh, cash outflows any costs that are there while simultaneously working for what are the opportunities that are there and uh, traders have a lot of competence beyond paper trading itself is a competence there are relationships how do you see if there are opportunity adjacencies how do you do things beyond if there are any sectors going down i think there's a lot of opportunity in this crisis we have had a lot of time all sitting at home for the last 6 weeks i think there's a lot of time to think <laughs> so yeah i think yeah i'm sure we'll come out stronger thank you yes sir we did come up with an opinion poll in the last webinar when we asked our members uh, what did you do during the lockdown you became lazy or you learned something i think over 90% said that they learned something new thank you sir thank you for uh, the compliment on the services what the paper trade in fraternity is offering to the converting industry thank you so much uh, my next question is to mr sunil gala ji uh, uh, mr sunil gala from the q and a box uh, i understand would like to take a question of mr harveer sahani yes uh, he has yeah so the question goes like this with online classes even for nursery and play schools do you see the trend to carry on after the covid in similar trend impacting further the printing of books that is his first question and second he is asking is the 6% trade sustainable yeah I so you wanted to take the question sir yeah yeah uh, of course so as i said uh, during pandemic uh, pre primary learning in the school looks very very difficult to me i don't think so even if school restarts uh, the parents will ever think of sending their kids to the school in the current year so whatever online tutoring can happen for their kids will happen but post uh, the uh, problem or pandemic uh, i believe uh, in country like india the continuation of learning even at physically physical learning in the preschools also including pre primary and primary will continue and to answer your next question 6% growth in publishing uh, if you recall what i mentioned was 6% was the growth in value terms if we adjust uh, the cost uh, rather inflation to it the actual volume growth was hardly 1 or 2% again i am saying that country like india where 95% of the pupils or students learn through state level curriculum for them to adopt to a new normal which is the online or digital learning is practically impossible today it may happen tomorrow it means after a couple of years so very near future for next 2 3 4 years i believe the print publication demand will continue and digital will not take over and simultaneously as i also said that it will complement the digital will complement the print it cannot supplement so that is my answer to that yes sir uh, in your school you did mention you gave a visibility of about 2 years for this but uh, do you think that uh, uh, the digital will entirely replace the traditional notebooks and textbooks sir and if yes according to you how long will it take sir no so uh, we are very clear at nomnit uh, having said about the dem demography of the student fraternity uh, reading material is quite likely to go on digital for that uh, the, that being <clears throat> the textbooks or the digest uh, many publishers to publish is likely to go digital going forward but writing material which i we believe is must uh, so writing material products will be required so all in all if i say then be textbook or other supplementary books 50% of the print publication is likely to get shifted to digital no doubt the hardware component i don't think so it is really fun to read everything on mobile or laptop laptops of course very very few children will have compared to the uh, con uh, country's population but overall uh, the technology also should improve then reading material also will get shifted to digital so to that extent i agree long term that is a uh, uh, the paper requirement or usage likely to reduce in textbooks and supplementary books thank you sir one small uh, addition to this question do you subscribe to the view that your retention power is better when you read from a textbook and not from a system sir uh, 
Of course, today, yes, with the products or the, uh, the gadgets that we have, retention power through textbook or the print is much better. But as I said, uh, with the improvement in technology with foldable tablets that we are hearing and is likely to come very soon, uh, you will get the same feeling as the print. And then at that point of time, uh, conversion to the digital will be much faster as far as even reading is concerned. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think you answered our questions in full. Uh, this is a very important uh, point which our trading fraternity will have to note uh, as they chart their future course of action. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And my next question is to uh, Mr. Kirit Modi, sir. Many of us know that you are you were one of the largest paper dealer in the country. You have now successfully migrated in from a paper dealer to a paper converter. In this background, sir, what we'd like to know is at a time when our fellow paper traders are grappling with multiple problems of low margins and delayed recovery from the market, the trading fraternity is eager to know the journey of yours from a trader to a converter and the challenges and opportunities you spotted in your journey. The second part of the question is, what is your advice to traders who are seeking to forward or backward integrate in their business? Well, oh dear, <laughs> yeah, I think this requires a session by itself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, uh, uh, you know, uh, I decided to uh, migrate from uh, paper distribution to converting uh, uh, because of mainly two reasons. Uh, the first one was, you know, I saw that, you know, uh, the paper distribution was becoming less of a distribution, but more of a financing. Mm. And, and, you know, it led to, you know, the risk reward ratio going completely, you know, out of whack. And, you know, I thought that, you know, I should uh, sit uh, at the right part of the value chain so that, you know, uh, we don't, you know, risk our capital. Uh, when the capital is at risk, uh, we have to be uh, very careful. And that is why I said in my talk, the last part of my talk, that uh, all the paper distributors and traders should focus on the risk side, uh, the, you know, uh, the liquidity of the customers and the solvency of the customers and you know, protect their capital rather than chase the tonnages and chase the you know, sales, which is the distributors' uh, major weaknesses. So uh, that is the reason why I migrated. And I feel that, you know, uh, uh, I'm quite happy to be uh, in the converting side rather than, you know, paper distribution side uh, because you are having what they, they call last mile connectivity. So, you know, uh, I mean, you know, today, in today's times, even for 25 pesa, the, you know, the, you know, customers shift the loyalty, there is nothing like relationship. So we, we thought that uh, we should be uh, migrating up and that is the reason why I did that. And I'm quite happy to uh, do that. But I, nevertheless, I enjoyed my journey uh, for paper distribution uh, because we were the first one to also that time to do Pan India distribution. That concept of you know, paper distribution, Pan India was also you know, uh, really pushed by me. And, you know, then I had to gracefully exit in, you know, about 2001. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was a near total perfect reply. And I think all our traders will have to note uh, what you have said and then, you know, uh, probably follow your footsteps towards value addiction. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So my next question is to Mr. Narendra. So, Pragati Offset is by far India's best commercial printer, which has won several national and international accolades and consumes large quantities of high-end paper and paper boards sourced from across the globe. In this background, sir, we have two questions. One is, how do you rate the paper and paper boards manufactured in India with that of the ones which you are importing? And what is your advice to the industry when they plan for the next expansion? That is the question number one. The question number two is, how will the growth of digital printing impact the growth of traditional offset printing? 
I, as far as the uh, bulk of paper we use is from uh, built and we are very, very happy with the quality of uh, whatever they're supplying. And the imported paper, of course, varies from, comes from Italy and from Korea and other places. I think the total tonnage of paper imported of these papers is so low, I don't think it, it makes sense to make it in India. It is easier to import it from outside. If the volume is there, then only we can make that paper, but otherwise we cannot. So uh, basically, the um, we are extremely happy with the Korean papers and the Italian ones. But again, last year, with the economy last seven quarters going down, when the economy is good, all people will ask, or kya acha hai? Now in the last seven quarters, or kya sasta hai? So I sincerely think things are taking and this particular year ahead, we really don't know. But in the long run, we will come back to normal. Definitely, there's no two ways about it and it will grow also. But at the same time, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 tons is not something you actually look forward to making in India. And I also think India is not a country where we can make paper correctly because we neither have pulp nor water nor power. So I sincerely think we leave it at that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I forgot the, the second question. part of the question. Second part of the yes, question. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, do you think uh, uh, the digital, digital printing? Yeah. Uh, as um, as uh, Sunilji said very clearly, both will coexist. It will never be that only that will exist or this will exist. The cost of printing digitally is still very, very high. There is no way you can print as cheap as offset and make number of copies. So you can be rest assured that offset is going to be there for a very, 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 very long time and nothing to worry about that. Yes, digital will come in, but then uh, please understand it is opening up new markets. You never had wedding books before. You never had so many things, uh, school kids having so many class um, albums. All these have come because of digital. These are not available before. They have now come because of digital. So both will coexist and we need not worry about that at all. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you so much. Our next question is to uh, Sri Ramesh Kejriwalji. Sir, in the monocotton segment, it is estimated that the share of virgin grade of packaging boards in India is 15%, whereas it is 30% of virgin boards globally. In this background, sir, do you foresee an accelerated demand for virgin grades of packaging boards in India? That is question number one. Question number two is, what is your take on shift from traditional offset printing to digital printing for monocotton applications? Yeah, so the first question about the virgin board, I believe that uh, the figure of 15% is not correct as far as my estimate is there, I believe that it is almost in the region of more than 20 or 25% currently. So I think there has been a better growth. If you look at normal paper growth of 8% to 10% for the folding carton or monocartons, I think the virgin grade board has increased nearly at double the space than the normal. That is why uh, view. And I think with the uh, you know, health related, hygiene related issues that will come up in future, where recycle board will have its own challenges, I think virgin board will grow much more. And secondly, you know, because of the higher bulk the virgin board has compared to recycle, I think you can downgrade the overall consumption of uh, weight into virgin board. That will also play an important role in terms of cost of transportation or other. So I believe that the growth of virgin board will grow at double the rate of the recycled board in the future as well. Coming to the digital play in the monocartons, I think digital, as Narendra and other panelists have said, will continue along with offset. Offset will continue to be the mainstay of any monocart production. Digital will be surviving only for run length of sheets 
which are in the region of 1000 maximum to 1500. And that will be for small lots. That's one part. Because the cost of digital print on monocarton is also very high with the high cost of consumables and high cost of equipment. But the biggest part the digital will play is in personalization and innovation. I think the kind of connectivity which you can have through digital on monocartons with the end customers, not with your you know, buyer, but the end customer, you are, where you can have a lot of app or other features and you can have connectivity, which we are seeing that in some of the product range is also happening. I think there it will play an important role. But if you look at overall volume, it will be a very small one. But digital will also have its own play uh, in its way. That's, that's what I think. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the reply. Uh, our next question is to Mr. Sandeep Badwaji. In the craft paper segment, the industry seems to be very fragmented with numerous small players producing craft paper using recycled fibers. In this background, uh, going ahead, do you see a scope of a large virgin based craft mill in India, sir? And uh, the second question is what the trading community feels is the role of a trader in, to service the corrugating industry is decreasing by the day. In this background, how can a paper trader play a larger, larger role in servicing the corrugating converters? Over to you, sir. Uh, paper in India, I don't think it is a I don't see it being visible in the near future because we don't have virgin fiber available. Number one, we don't have the trees. So hence it is just going to be economical as Mr. Narendra has also mentioned earlier, it just be uneconomical to manufacture virgin fiber in India. Uh, so hence we will be traditionally stuck to recycle grades as for the time being, and it's better to import. Uh, Secondly, to the question that, uh, yes, there is a big challenge because in the, in the automatic segment, uh, particularly the traders, the automatic manufacturers tend to go directly to the paper mills because of their large volumes. So again, I think the traders will have to, as Kirat Bhai mentioned earlier, that this is becoming a financing model. Uh, you will have to be a little bit more innovative uh, to you know, find a niche for yourself to deal with the corrugating plants, especially the automatic players. That's my two bit tip. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, to all the panelists, I think we couldn't have had better answers uh, from such distinguished people. Before I pass on to Hiren, I have a common question which I would like to pose to all the panelists. This, this question too has uh, two parts. Uh, we have the best minds of paper converting industry in India who not only run their organizations professionally, but also have a, have a pan-India presence. In this background, what do you feel are the pluses and minuses of a paper trader? That is a question number one. Question number two is, what do you think a paper trader should do to run their business professionally and also have a pan-India presence? Because now the trade is highly localized. We don't see a pan-India present dealer. Um, so in this background, we would like to have the views of all the panelists, sir. Can we start with uh, Gautam Pai, sir, please? Uh, could you repeat that question again? Sir, um, see, what are the pluses and minuses of a paper trader, according to you? And what should a paper trader do to manage his business professionally and also to have a pan-India presence? Um, I think it's a tough one. <laughs> I think uh, to handle uh, the business professionally, basically it, it can't be based on one person, right? So there's a larger organization or team uh, behind that person. Uh, but my view is I think, uh, someone asked on the chat as well about uh, what are the expectations. I think uh, for if a paper trader is more like a partner where you work with uh, you know people like us to find 
custom solutions based on the current situation or the projects that we work on. I think that will be really appreciated. And when I say custom solutions, it's about working things. I think a partnership approach, I think, is uh, what I think I would say uh, is important. Thank you, sir. Uh, do you feel the, the trade has to uh, uh, do something much better to match uh, the expectation of a converter, sir? Um, I, I think uh, it, it's hard to, hard to generalize because, you know, I, like, uh, like us, I think each one is at a different level. But I think what has really worked well is when you have a partnership approach. Because when you have a partnership approach, you're trying to understand what um, the printer or packaging uh, converter wants because ultimately we have to win from in the end market. If we get work together, get more business from the end market, everyone in the whole chain actually benefits. So I think looking at it not transactionally, but understanding that how together we can create more business in the end market, create increase the pie, I think that's what it takes ultimately. So I think trying to work with um, customers that people like us to understand how that can be accomplished so that everyone benefits. I think ultimately that's the key. Thank you, sir. Can we have the comments of uh, uh, Mr. Sunil Gala, please? Uh, though I'm not the right person, uh, never ever ever had dealt in paper trading, but generally I would like to say is, uh, uh, which is common for everything, including the paper trade, uh, which is the transparency. At times, uh, of course, good old days, I do recollect uh, while uh, buying paper myself, uh, transparency was lacking. Uh, it could be the uh, <clears throat> scenario today as well. So what I would uh, suggest to all the whole trader community is be transparent in tough times and in good times. So uh, th that is one suggestion. And secondly, like all uh, trading is an activity uh, which is in each and every businesses. So to use digital and to collect data uh, of a customer, as Mr. Gautam rightly said, uh, understand customers so well that, uh, and this should be captured digitally, uh, that, that will really help going forward to be partnering with their customers and also explaining the same to the supplier, which is the paper mill. Uh, usage of digital will really play a good role even in trading. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And over to Mr. Kirit Modi. I think uh, you are the most apt person, sir. You have experienced both and uh, you know what are the pluses and minuses of a trader. Over to you, sir. Uh, well, uh, I said, you know, earlier also that, you know, we need to the distributors will need to understand the customer's needs more deeply, get more involved into the, you know, the supply chain of the customer. Rather than, you know, focus too much on the paper mill side and try to push a particular paper to the customer. And that has been the, you know, bane of the distribution. Uh, although I was also part of it when I was doing it, uh, only, you know, push whatever I'm distributing. But rather than that, you know, you have to be right, invert the whole cycle, go to the customer, what is his need and be innovative and offer the multiple choices and do more of a real distribution rather than, you know, only, you know, transaction based financing. And that will definitely help them to go pan India. If you have that mindset and you have that multiple, you know, uh, access to the meals to source the right product and to, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, Sundil Bhai said, I think the transparency part is more or less taken care as of, you know, it was there 20 years back. Uh, I'm, I'm sure because of these, uh, you know, digital age, there is enough transparency. That's not the, the issue. The issue is the customer focused rather than, you know, paper mill focused and understand the customer's needs more deeply. That's what I feel. Uh, will help the distributors to go to the next level. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now, may I request uh, Sri Narendra, sir, to give his views, please. 
as uh, gautam said it's very very important that uh, it is a partnership only and we have followed this principle all through all of us should understand that everybody does business only for one reason to make profit if you don't make profit then no point of doing that business so if i as a printer i am working with a with a trader or a paper supplier he has to make money similarly he cannot overcharge me that i will lose my job with my customer so it's a win win situation if both of us are within our this one and our relationship has grown with almost all our uh, uh, vendor partners and uh, it's been a wonderful relationship thank you thank you sir uh, over to shri ramesh kejriwal ji please so my view would be that uh, i think if i understand your question that how paper traders can expand in terms of pan india business strategy so i would say that wherever you look at converters who are having multiple plants the buying happens only at one location which is the head office of a plant so i think there he will have to have one kind of strategy that he will have to have very strong relationship at the headquarter of a multi located plant plus together with that wherever his plants are there or a converter's plants are there he should be able to have either a representative either from mill side or or his own so that he can service those plants efficiently because remotely you can also do lot of thing digitally but i think physical presence either from the mill side or from his own side to service because the large plants are also converting almost close to uh you know 200 tons every month 200 300 tons overall maybe more so there you know the service part will be very very critical coming to the independent converter servicing through pan india i think one of the factor is through digital data and also having dealers or representative in each location it could be their own dealer uh, own representative or it can be a partnership as we talk about it he can partner with a, a person locally who can be a part of his profit uh, account so that he feels that he is also the owner of that business and give service i think that is the second part that he can expand into pan india thirdly and lastly i would say that paper dealer should not just become a conduit for buying from mills and supplying to customer they should have their own assessment of customers in terms of risk assessment secondly in terms of quality assessment so i would go a step further to say that if a large paper distributor or dealer is there he should set up his own small lab to test all kind of papers rather than just depend on the paper mills or the customer see if he is making his own small lab to test various kinds of and grades of paper so i think it is high time that the paper dealers especially the large ones build their own laboratory to test the paper and give a proper feedback to both the mills and the customers thank you thank you sir uh, over to mr sandeep wadwa ji please thank you what are the pluses uh, and minuses of a paper trader in your uh, estimation and uh, what do you think a paper trader should do to grow pan india so just to you know taking comparisons from the overseas paper dealers and what is different first of all i find that the paper dealers in india are limited to a certain mill or a certain principle so hence they do not have the complete product range and that's one limitation that they need to look at a complete product range that the customer requires so that's a customer focused based second thing which comes up is that you know looking at storage is one challenge i see a lot of companies have and if a customer would come up with a storage i mean a dealer to come up with a storage solution would be great the third would be decal matching okay is that this is a challenge which some mills have a problem of decal matching if the paper mill because of his sorry paper dealer because of his network can provide a solution to decal matching which is done extensively in europe and us uh, that's another added advantage okay 
and finally it comes down to you know so that's where a customer would be willing to pay that extra charges because he's getting these services uh which the customer does not have to worry about uh so i think these are my two three things and i as K mr kejriwal said very well valid point that you know testing own testing facility know your product better is a very important aspect as well so that's my three few points thanks thank you sir thank you so much thank you to all the gentlemen uh, for giving your views over to hiren now thank you had a good sunday knowledge full morning before we go to thanksgiving i would just share the results of the poll which we had conducted today and i would just end the poll right now so that i can share the results i'm sharing the results now uh, okay i'll just go through the results one by one the first question was which converting industry in india is globally competitive so the answer is packaging with 57% leads second with commercial offset printing 30% likewise there are other results second question is would you like to grow in your current line of business 53% diversify 47% do you foresee consolidation happening in the paper converting industry is the third question yes is the answer 61% no is 8% and not sure is 32% fourth question is in order to fund your ambitious growth plan you would prefer to borrow 53% dilute equity in your company is 48% fifth question is in order to have a pan india presence in paper trading you prefer do it on your own 29% and to have a fellow trader of different region partnership basically with the fellow trader of different region 71% circulation of newspaper in india in the next 5 year is likely to grow 17% to remain flat is 36% and to fall is 48% in india paper napkins have replaced handkerchiefs to a last ex uh, large extent this is true 69% people say that falls 31% eighth question healthy way of consume consuming a beverage is by using traditional mugs and tumblers is 35% paper cups 66% Ninth question: Once a vaccine for COVID-19 is in place, you feel that marriages, festivals, and other social functions will be celebrated with the usual yeah, grandeur is forty-one percent, and will be substituted will be sixty percent. So I don't think so. People are easily going to do the same way again. And the last question is: E-billing will e-billing when introduced will be an enabler to our business seventy-eight percent, to be a dampener to our business twenty-three percent. so this is the result to our poll and over to you venkat sir for the thanksgiving sir thank you hiren i think it was an interesting poll and our people have participated in it, uh, in it quite actively um gentlemen we are coming to the close of the third webinar of fpta um on behalf of our president and the entire managing committee of the federation of paper traders associations of india i would like to thank all our panelists mr gautam pai mr sunil gala mr kirit modi mr narendra mr ramesh kejriwal mr sandeep badwa for having spared their time and for having shared their extensive knowledge with us gentlemen your thoughts have given deep insights into our business and i am sure each and every one of us will take whatever you have given to us and we will try to improve upon on our businesses and to all the participants out there all my friends from the paper trading community for the information of all those people who are listening to this webinar we have had registrations from sri lanka indonesia and i think also from china if i'm not wrong china singapore um, yeah and then uh, from singapore um, and we have a whole gamut of audience we have students as uh, uh, hiren made in this uh, mentioned in his opening remarks we have students we have converters we have paper traders we have paper mill owners we have executives of paper mills uh, and a whole lot of people i think all of us have been benefited by the vision of the visionaries here 
I would like to thank each and every participant who have spared their time and uh, who have participated in this webinar in large numbers. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a nice Sunday. Hope to see you all soon. Bye. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.